Okay, we're live. Hello. How's, How's it going? How's it going? Hey. Hey, everybody. Hey, we're live. Hello. We have an echo. How's it going? How's it going? Hey. Hey, everybody. Hey. There we go. It's muted. Scott, do you need to mute on your end? Yeah, I did. I just muted. The, okay, uh... good. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hey, so welcome to our live stream. Um, this is live stream number two with Autosport Labs. I think we've done live streams before, but I think we're gonna we're working on a series. We're gonna try to do one every week. And this week we have um, Scott Barton with us from Performance Coaching. And uh, Scott has been a friend of ours for a long time and a long time race capture user. And we're going to talk about how to go faster on a racetrack. Well, what, without looking at squiggly lines, we're going to talk specifically about how to take corners faster. So um, when S Scott and I were chatting about this yesterday and I was thinking like, wow, like when, when we first started racing, I was thinking like, what was the most intimidating part of racing? Well, it's like going fast in a straight line is easy, but taking those corners, it's like, that's the part where like, whoa, I'm going to fly off the, the, you know, the, the, the outside of the track. If I don't, if I go too fast or if I don't do it right. And that like being able to master taking a corner is really critical for being able to go fast around the racetrack. So Scott, what do you remember what it was like when you first started racing? I know that was a long time ago. Yeah, that was uh, back in back in the late 1900s, <laughs> uh, 1999. But still, um, yeah. Um, I mean, I started autocrossing first before I started doing doing track days, and so that really wasn't much of a concern. And if I went flying off the track, it would be into a cone, and I did that a bunch of times. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, so what we're going to talk about today is the concept of the traction circle and how to read that. So we have a little quick presentation and then we're gonna do a little demo and then we will view, look at some existing data on Podium. So we're gonna look at some advanced data, like an adva data from an advanced driver and an intermediate driver and then a beginner driver. So what is a traction circle? Well, a traction circle is like a way to visualize how you're using your grip. And it's not, they're not squiggly lines or anything. It's just literally talking about how the car is gripping from side to side, the cornering grip, as well as the brake and acceleration. And the way the traction circle works is that it visualizes using a bunch of dots and it shows you where how, where and how you're using your cornering uh, capabilities of the car. It literally shows you how you're behaving in the corners. So reading the traction circle, there are certain patterns and it's a really visual thing, which makes it really cool. But you can tell the difference between a driver who has less skill and a driver that has more skill. So Scott, you wanna you wanna talk a little bit about what we're looking at here? Sure. So um, basically, you can see the, um, the the driver with more skill. It's more of a, a you know sideways D shaped, right? And um, inside of that, it's it's hollow. Um, so basically, what that means is they're actually using more of the uh, potential. So the the friction circles, obviously, if you have uh, one G of grip, you have you know one G. You can do one G in braking, or you can do one G in cornering. Uh, and so it's a circle. So you can see that the D kind of represents a half of a circle, right? So that means they're actually using almost all of that 1G the entire time that they're uh, going around the track, right? Um, the one with less skill, you can see it looks more like a T or maybe even a triangle. So uh, if it looks like a T, that would be in, in, uh, indicative of a, uh, a novice. Uh, if it looks more like a triangle, that's more of a intermediate level driver. Um, so this is kind of like, the one that we're showing with less skill um, is more of a, a intermediate level driver there. Um, but if it were a T, as you can kind of see that the white T in there, 
if it looked more like that, but just a little bit uh, arced as it goes to the corners. What that means is they're basically, um, you know, as they transition from throttle to brakes, they're doing so slowly. And so it's actually creating, you know, if you're, you're logging at, you know, uh, 10 hertz or, you know, uh, uh, 10 times every second, uh, it's plotting those, uh, you know, as you're transitioning from throttle to brakes, uh, it can plot several several points as you're going from um, uh, from full throttle to full brakes. It's taken that long uh, for you to be able to get up to uh, full braking. Uh, and then when you're coming off of the brakes, what happens is you're you're actually coming, yeah, thank you. You're coming um, off of the brakes uh, and you're not turning yet. And so it starts to um, go back in that inside that T, uh, right, before you start turning, and then it makes a slight arc, uh, inverted arc, um, over to the, the um, you know, x-axis there, uh, what would be the x-axis as you're, as you're turning and gaining uh, lateral grip. Yeah. Um, and then... Um... Yeah, so then again with the, the more scale, right, they're basically, you can see that there's, very, there's almost a, a, a hole in the middle, um, you're not. You're, you're. In fact, you're seeing them. Uh, there's not a line, a, a full line that goes from um, uh, break. You know, from when they're accelerating to braking, and kind of there's a, a gap in the middle there. What that means is they're actually transitioning from full throttle to full brakes fairly quickly, and then they're once they are uh, need to start turning, they're actually coming off of the brakes at the same time as they're starting to turn. And so, uh, you know, as they give up a little bit of braking uh, tra uh, uh, traction. They're using that traction to start turning. And so the entire time they're using all of the tires available grip to either brake uh, or turn. Right. You know, and, and blending the two of them together. Blending the two of them together is the key because right. yeah, if you if you just brake, then turn, you're not you're not yeah. gonna be able to go as fast as if you like start unwinding the steering wheel while you know while while you're letting off the brake. Correct. Yeah. So we have a little bit of a, um, yeah, that was good. Well, now we have a little bit of a dynamic uh, demo here. I think you should be able to see that. So here we have the race capture system connected to the race capture app, and I'm going to reach for it. And so let's say, let's say, um, I'm not. I promised myself I wouldn't make race car sounds. But if you, <laughs> so if you imagine the race capture in the car, <laughs> so we're, what, what we're doing is we're cornering side to side and then we're braking, whoa, had an alert come up and then we're not braking. And then, um, you can see the dynamic behavior. So if you're, if you're braking and cornering, then it goes off into this, into this quadrant. So you're, you're doing the left and the right. And then if you quickly switch to braking or accelerating, then you can see how that, that would make a, a D shape in the, in the, um, in the graph versus just this T shape. Cause we can kind of simulate that T shape. If we're, let's say we're cornering, let's say we're braking and then cornering, it would make that inverted T shape or the T shape. Whereas if you're doing if you're if you're doing threshold breaking, then you would get that I should put that in the camera, but you would get that shape where you're you're blending the braking and the turning together. And then that would be the hallmark of a of a more advanced driver. So we're looking at the we're looking at the um, the comments. So if you have any questions while we're presenting, feel free to ask and we'll, we will answer those as we can. If you guys are there, can you give it a, uh, a thumbs up or a like or whatever so we know you're there, see who's here? Yeah. <laughs> see, Brian, I'll try to teach you some stuff, we'll see. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Next up is a, a demo. Uh, we're going to look at some data. We're going to what we're going to do first is look at some data from. Uh, we're going to show you what a more professional driver looks like on the track. 
And uh, it looks like when we were looking at this yesterday, uh, we found some data from VIR from quite a long time ago. <laughs> so we're gonna go, we're gonna open up our time machine and go back to 2015. Yeah. There we go. Let's see, it was the You're in 2013, it looks like. Yeah. You want to go 15. Oh, it was this one. Was it A1515? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was the AER race. There you go. Man. There we go. All right. And look at all those laps. All right. I have a view on here that will show it was this one here. So we identified a few laps that were really interesting. So I think there was like lap 179 or 182. Yeah, both of those are, are, are good. Yeah. All right. So here is lap one. That was lap 179. And Scott, sure. you want to talk about what this looks like? Sure. Um, as you can see, it's very clearly a um, upside down D, right? There's not a whole lot of, of dots in the middle. So we basically have, you know, the dots side to side from from uh, accelerating and cornering, as well as um, the rounded portion, which is basically full uh, full brakes or utilizing all of the available grip. Um, this is actually um, my car with um, professional driver Mike Skeen driving it. That's why it looks so good. Um, but as you can see, like there's there's not even a line going from um, his acceleration, right, which is in the middle there. To, to the full braking. Which is right? at the there's, bottom. There's, what, I think there's a total of three dots right? yeah. between the entire lap. It, um, it's, so, it's so cool because he's going from like acceleration instantaneously to braking, right? To full, right, to, to full threshold braking like immediately, right? Yeah. Uh, and then he doesn't ever allow um, the tire to use less than its available traction the entire time. And you can see that again by that rounded um, the rounded uh, D shape at the bottom there, right? It never goes, it never goes back in towards the center, right? It always stays. At, if you look at this, it's almost a perfect, what one one point? Uh, what's that second line? It must be one point five Gs or something. It's like almost one point five, so one point two five Gs. Yeah, yeah. So the outer the yeah. outer portion of that circle, the traction circle, is one point five Gs, right? So yeah, you know, he's basically using one point five Gs the entire time. Uh, that he's uh, you know cornering and, and doing all that stuff, right? Yeah. So that's that is one very easy way to tell. Um, you know, I can tell when I when I um, am coaching someone uh, if I take a look at their um, you know before I I worked with them or whatever, I can take a look at uh, their traction circle and immediately be able to tell their level. I immediately, it's very very obvious, right? So again, yeah, if it's D shaped with a very noticeable hole in the middle. Obviously, they're very, very advanced, right? Yeah, yeah. The less, the less there's in the le the fewer dots that are in the middle, the more they're just using the maximum grip of the tires, whether it's cornering or braking or blending of the two. Right. Because there's like nothing in the middle. Because anything in the middle is basically a waste of performance or Traction. speed, right? Traction. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You're just um, kind of so like coasting. Like if there's a lot, of, if you have a lot of dots in between here then you're kind of like coasting in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what is it? Yeah. What is it like to let, let's say, so we're talking about trail braking, right? You're entering a corner, you're braking. And then what is that sensation like? Yeah. So obviously it's, it's getting to um, full braking uh, as quickly as possible. Now, you know, if, especially if you're in an aero, aero car, which mine kind of is, right? It has a big splitter and a wing on it. Um, it's not, you know, super aero car, but it certainly has a little bit. Um, you know, at your highest, at your highest speed, you know, all things even, you're going to have your most grip because that downforce is working for you. So you want to transition to your, your braking as quickly as possible to be able to utilize, uh, that grip that, that is available to you. Right. Um, so you, you want to do the, the, um, the lion's share of your braking, right. Um, initially, uh, while you have that, all of that grip. Yeah. Um, and then again, when you get closer to the the corner obviously right you're going to be 
trailing off of the brakes, right, slowly. And as you do so, you're going to be, you know, initiating your, your turn um, such that, you know, any little bit of, of traction you're giving up as you're releasing the brakes, you're adding to the, uh, the steering input uh, for lateral, lateral acceleration. Nice. Right. And, and it's a process of, of feeling it all out and, and coordinating all, all of that. Right. It's kind of a, uh, like a dance. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. It just feels yeah. right. When you, when you nail it, you're like, Whoa, yeah, <laughs> yeah that hasn't happened a lot for me, but, um, <laughs> always working on it. Okay. Let's look at some, let's look at, um, something to compare again. So wait, I think we did find something nope. from Watkins Glen. So these are all, um, so if you have the podium app installed, you can, look at this information just as easily as we are. You can just go in here and browse and, and compare laps and stuff. Um, okay, so it was this 2022 NASA Northeast race two. Who are we gonna pick on? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the AER and then, so here's Watkins Glen. So what are we looking at here? Well, it looks like he had, looks like the, um, the channels are flipped. So we're just going to have to look sideways, but right. what, what do you see in this Scott? Sure. So again, this is a uh, very telltale intermediate driver, right? So it basically is a, t a triangle shaped, right? It's not rounded. Um, right. Right. And there's a, a distinct line in the middle there. Yeah. Right, so what there. that means, right. So what that means is they're taking a while to go from full acceleration to full braking, right? They're, 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 they're not um, getting right on, on the brakes hard enough, either that, or when they do, they slowly come off of the brakes uh, before they start turning. Um, as right. So that, that, would, that, that line in the middle there. Now, if you see that it's triangular shape instead of um, uh, rounded, yeah. right. A D shape. What you're actually seeing is um, basically when you uh, when it's rounded, it, it's a straight line, right? So uh, you should be able to. If you there was there was a string that was you know let's say uh, you know one inch long, that would bring us to this first circle here, right? Well, it should then go all the way ar around in a in a, uh, in, in, an in, arc. A arc, yeah. in an arc all the way to every single point on it. Instead, what we're seeing is we're seeing a line within inside of that arc. What that means is that they're not actually using um, full uh, the the full capabilities of the um, the tire. The reason why it is a triangle shape instead of uh, an arc shape is because if you were to actually if this were an X Y graph, right, and you were to to, to plot the maximum um, uh, G's as one, let's say it's one G up here, which one this one is pretty close to, just a little bit over, anyways. Um, what you're seeing is if you were actually make, make that triangle a line and you were to, um, you know, touch anywhere on that line, what would happen is it would actually, even though it's within that, uh, one G radius, it's well inside of it. If you were to add the two of them together, right? So if you were to go halfway between accelerating and braking, yep. right about where, where it's at. So that would be about 0.5 G on the lateral and 0.5 G on the um, uh, braking, which uh, you know, total adds up to be um, one G. However, if it were actually a circle, right, because it's uh, the radius, um, the math actually adds up that if you were doing it properly and you only had one G to work with, you would be able to break at 0.71 Gs as well as be able to turn at 0.7 Gs for a total combined. Uh, uh, um, g of 1.42 g's right so basically yeah. this way that with the triangle the most that they're ever getting it, the most they're ever getting is a combined of 1.2 i'm sorry of 1 g when the potential uh the potential is actually 1.42 g's uh that they're able to that this car is capable of doing yeah so right? it's like so having your cake and eating it too <laughs> right that there's a lot on the table by doing this yeah yeah, that's a really good, like even here on the top, we have, um, there's like an arc. It actually arcs inward. Right. And so that means that it, when, it, when it arcs inwards, um, that means they're below intermediate. They, you know, this person would be coming up to that, you know, established intermediate level 
Um, it's pretty close, so I would certainly call them intermediate. Um, maybe at the lower end of it, but certainly at the um, certainly intermediate. When you see a very pronounced arc, um, like you had shown um, in one of your previous uh, graphs, that's certainly it, it looks more like a T with, yeah. with but art. Well, um, you know, kind of a fancy T that's that's art. That's absolutely a, uh, a novice or beginner uh, driver there. Yeah, actually, speaking of which, let's take a look at. Um... Let's take a sure. look at that. Okay, so here's Sonoma Raceway. And then this is, here's some data that um, shows a lot of, so this, this also has a lot of, um, instead of a D-shaped, it's almost arc, arcs in the other direction. Right, so it's arced inwards, but also what you're seeing is there's a lot of, uh, if you remember the D, right, yeah. there's a, a hole in the middle, right? There's two teeny tiny holes in this. They're basically not, they're not, which means they're not consistent, right? Um, so yeah. they're, they're, they're basically not using the all of the available traction, like hardly ever, essentially, right? And we can see what's happening is they are, um, you, you can see the max uh, G breaking, and then it's a, it's a, a very distinct point, right? It then recedes back in before it starts turning. That means they're actually coming off of the brakes in a straight line, right? Before they even start turning, like significantly come off of the brakes in a straight line. Um, you know, let's again, if they're at 100% braking, they, they're basically coming three quarters of the way off of the brakes at least uh, before they even start yeah. turning. Um, probably more than that, uh, we're seeing here. We have a couple of questions. So, um, Stephen Nash says, Assume the car handling has been set up so drivers can maintain balance across all tires. So that wasn't a question, but assumes the car handling has been set up so driver can maintain balance across all tires. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. We're not we're not talking about like NASCAR here where you're we're turning left or whatever. Right, right. Yeah, there there are some. Um, I guess the. Um, yeah, so there there's kind of an assumption that you have. Um, you know, reasonable balance on the car and that you have the, the car has like a decent amount of grip front to rear. Yeah. And, and, and that, right. And, and so it's not going to be right. So your, your um, lateral acceleration will not always be uh, exactly the same as your, um, uh, let's see, your, your, um, your yeah. braking or your deceleration, right? Um, yeah. Typically it'll be, but typically it'll be within 0.2 of each other. Okay, so, so I've, I've never seen one that can do exactly 1G of braking and 1G of turning. Usually it's 1.2 and yeah. 1, something like that, or 1.4 and 1.2. So, uh, but so usually they're 1.2 uh, Gs of each other. So Dave asks, he says, I am a bit confused. I was told that for a lot of corners, you should do all of your braking in a straight line before initiating the turn. In order to get the arc of the D, does that mean you need to be trail braking? In, Absolutely. In other words, decel in the X and Y axis. Yeah. So um, when you first start out in this sport, the safest way, obviously, is you know, uh, break in a straight line, right, and th and then turn. Um, and and so absolutely, that is the 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 safest way. It's not the fastest way. Right. Right. So trail breaking is absolutely the the fastest way. Um, you know, basically blend again, blending, um, blending your braking and your um, and you're turning at the same time, right? So when you brake, what happens, right? We load the front tires uh, up, right? The, the, the car, basically, for if this is straight, right? We brake, the front goes down, right? We, we're transferring weight to the front, and we're taking uh, weight off of the rear of the tires, right? So if we start turning right now, the front has more grip than the rear. It's going to want to, you know, uh, rotate pretty easily, assuming you're not overdoing it, right? You're, you're not, you're not, you haven't exceeded your, um, you know, braking ability, you're not sliding or anything like that, right? There's still, as you're braking, you still got a teeny little bit left. As you're coming off, you then want to transfer it that way over, right? So you're braking and then you start turning to, to do it, right? Otherwise, if you brake, lift, and then turn, you're doing this, right? And so it takes a little while for, the, for it to take a set. Instead, you're braking and then, uh, you know, turning and it's rotating it back to the rear as as you do so. Yeah. As you, as you, when you when you're braking, you start turn you start turning in, and then you also start letting off the brakes as you're turning in, right? 
but you're you're kind of overlapping the you're overlapping the two together. Yeah. Right. And, and it's and 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 so uh, Dave, to your point, um, you know, the reason why it can they they tell you that is because it is certainly a lot safer. If you just you know start trying to trail break, if you've never done it before. And you overdo it again. You've got all that weight on the front, not a whole lot of weight in the rear. If you overdo it, what's going to happen, right? You're just going to, you're just going to, um, you know, basically over rotate that car. And usually, when you're trail braking, you're doing it at a very high rate of speed. So, um, yeah, you know, right. But it, but it's definitely something that you're going to want to uh, to to look into uh, to learn about. Um, and uh, you know, so one of the things is is my if you go back to that that triangle there nope. is. Yeah, I'm going to find um, another one. Go on. Yeah, I was just going to say that basically for the longest time, my data kind of looked like that. And I was kind of plateaued at that. And I had a triangle thing. And I kind of had read when I first started driving about the friction circle, the traction circle, um, you know, and I was starting to read about uh, trail braking and didn't really get it. And then I re, you know, re reviewed, re read um, that, that, uh, data on, on the uh, traction circle and it just kind of clicked that, okay, here's what I need to do. I really need to be focusing on, on, um, you know, any little bit of, of traction that I'm giving up on uh, by coming off of the, um, the, the brakes, I need to add that to the steering wheel. And I slowly worked my way up, uh, up uh, to that. Obviously I wasn't able to get to that full D shape there. Yeah. Um, here's a, as well. here's some data from NJMP, uh, the lemons race. Yeah, so what's interesting about this is you can clearly see that there's obviously a lot more right turns than there is left turns because we've got a, a lot more data on one side than we do the other. Right. Um, the other interesting thing is the one with the, the, the side that does have a lot more turns is more triangular shaped, whereas the one that doesn't have a whole lot of data is that T shape. It's actually, you know, as it com comes down, it's actually arc like this. It's not a, not a straight line there. Um, so one, you know, that could certainly be because of the, the turn, but obviously if there's not a whole lot of turns, you know, if you're not, if you never do a whole lot of left turns, you, you, you know, you're, you're obviously a lot better at making right turns than you are, uh, left turns at this point in your driving career as, as a, you know, beginner to intermediate level driver. Yeah. What I've noticed here, like in this braking zone here, there's a lot of hovering in the, yes. kind of like, it's like. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, and I've, I'm guilty of this myself, right? Because I want to be easy on the car or like I'm hesitant. I'm like, you know, like there's that, this slow transition from full throttle to full braking. You know, sometimes it'll be like, I'm full throttle and then I'll let off and then, okay, now I'm applying the brakes. Whereas for like maximum performance, you're, you're going from full throttle to, to, you're not hammering the brakes because you don't want to lock up or whatever, but you're, you're doing it so fast that there's like no, there's no um, transition in between in this D shape. There's like the T part of the T is gone, right? Right, and and that that makes sense, especially in a very high horsepower car with low skill. So you know, I do a lot of uh, instructing in um, exotic cars and um, you know very high horsepower cars. And one of the things that you know I allow them to do if is, is to actually before we get to that brake zone is to actually coast. The reason being is, um, you know, I was in a GT2, uh, uh, you know, GT2 RS um, with a top speed 180 at Monticello. Um, <laughs> it's, it, was still, it was still accelerating so fast at that speed that, you know, as you're accelerating, your brake point moves, right? And so yeah. if you're still at that speed, I mean, we're going warp speed and it's still pulling hard um, that your brake zone is, is moving. So, you know, I had them, uh, uh, lift coast so that way we're no longer accelerating you can now judge the judge where you need to to break um again as a you know a advanced level driver you don't need that you shouldn't be doing that right you should know uh, exactly by using reference points and whatever else you need to do to know exactly where you need to come off of that throttle and immediately go to uh to brakes but yeah. you know as a novice driver uh, especially in a high horsepower car yeah you, you might want to consider doing that uh, to be able to find your brake zone and then work your way up to not having to 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 do that coast um yeah uh, and and going from immediately from from throttle uh to brakes but you know you can see the data here that that may be the case for them it may not necessarily be a very high horsepower 
um, uh, car. It just may be new to them. Um, right. You know, high speed, and they're just all right. If I blow this by ten feet, that might be the difference between between me staying on the track or going off of it at that skill level. Right. But yeah, it, it's a combination it, it, of things. Like it's it's your overall skill as a driver. Like, can I jump into any car and go fast? Right. And then, am I familiar with the track? Am I familiar with the car itself of, of what it can do, the balance and its power to weight ratio and its braking capabilities? And once you, when you have the perfect combination of all that, then that's when you can be like, you can really go take it to the limit in that, in that sense. Like we saw with the first example at VIR. Right, exactly. And it's, it's something that you don't, you don't just be like, oh, I, I see that I've got a lot of, you know, uh, dots inside the center there. I need to get rid of that. So I'm just going to go out and I'm going to wait till the last possible second and I'm going to break as hard as I possibly can. Guess what? You're probably going to go off this side of the track, right? You need to do baby steps. You need to right. slowly work your way up to that. Uh, reference points is how you do that, right? So you need to find reference points. You need to use them and then you need to revise them as you, as you uh, gain more speed. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, you're basically going to be like, oh, I could break a little bit later. Well, you do that, you, you've now increased your speed a little bit. And so you're going to slowly work your way to where, you know, your break point, um, you know, where you think you need to break and where you actually need to break meet. But yeah. you need to slowly uh, do it in, in baby steps. Don't be doing it, you know, 50 feet or 100 feet differences each time. Work your way up to it. Yeah, that's... um. That's really good. Like you could probably like baby steps. It's like if you if you if you're like break then turn kind of driver, maybe you could take take a baby step and go, "Okay, I'll just do a little bit of like turning a little bit towards the end of my braking zone when I'm almost done with the braking and then just get a feel for what that's like." Right. And, and so that's where you see basically that T start to transition to a triangle. Right. That's exactly what, so, you know, we saw a couple of those where they, it wasn't quite a T, it wasn't quite a triangle. That's what that is, is, is they're working their way up to, the, they've gotten, you know, uh, close, but they're, they're not quite there yet. When you see any arc inside of that, side of that D shape, right, if it looks, uh, instead of the, um, what should be a D, if it's arc inwards, um, then obviously they are, they're definitely working their way up to, uh, up to that. Yeah. So I'm going to load up the, the first one again as a palette cleanser. Just so we could see what that looks like again. Sure. So 179. So there we go. There's the very few dots in the middle. And then this this corner like almost literally follows the the arc of the traction circle. Almost yeah, perfectly. exactly. I mean, it's a perfect, perfect arc. Yeah. So um, we got another comment. Um, Tim says, for me, I find too that for longer turns, such as turn 11 at CMP, trail break until a point where I immediately transition to acceleration to slightly kick the back of the car out. In other words, not just for shorter okay. turns. I mean, th that kind of sounds like a setup issue uh and you've just figured out something that that works for you right? well, that sounds kind of autocrossy in a way too where right, you're like, a, like a flick yeah kind of yeah getting the car to flick and i i bet i bet with some um with some setups you might be able to get it to rotate i could i could see how you might want to get it to rotate right at a point where you could feel like the nose is pointed right in the right direction so you can like you know go forward from that point. And then uh, Tim I, says, unless I do that, then the car tends to be a little tight. Not sure what you know, tight means. Actually, at CDP, I did the exact same thing, but this was in um, uh, like a Ford LTD. It was, I forgot who, uh, the, the name of the team, but it was this monster, monster uh, car. I mean, it was huge. Uh, it had actually had bigger tires up front than it did in the rear to be able to make this thing turn. Because uh, it, you know, didn't belong on a, on a racetrack, and I literally I had to do the exact same thing, uh, where I had to basically, you know, trail brake, get it to go in, and then just mash on it, mash on the uh, the the throttle to get the car to continue to rotate um, the rest of the rest of the turn and exit out of, out of it. But again, that was me dealing with a setup issue. A proper handling sports car shouldn't require that. Shouldn't shouldn't need that. Yeah. What what were you saying this two thirteen nine time lap one hundred eighty two? Was that the fastest lap of the race? Uh no, so it was a two two uh two thirteen uh two thirteen point four, that's farther down. So uh this was again uh, Mike Skeen driving, he had just gotten into the car um 
Uh, you can see that there's like an eight minute just prior to that. There's like an eight minute lap time uh, where we did our pit stop. He had just gotten yeah. into the car and literally on his out lap did the fastest lap of the, the day. Um, we were already up by a lap or two at, in an eight, eight hour, nine hour AR race. Um, and we were concerned about the yeah. dip, the dip temps. We saw the dip temps were uh, overheating. So I had to ask him to kind of dial it down and try and, you know, so he basically went from a two, you know, 13 to doing consistent two 15s, two 16s, um, you know, yeah. because that's all we needed. You know, I mean, we Here, here's the previous we driver. Go, the dip ended up going the, the next day. We made it half of the race the next day. Um, but what's kind of funny is that the, the, the data that we were looking at before, the other two 13s that we were looking at were actually right after I told him that, that um, you know, that we're running out of fuel is going to have him pit. So he's like, all right, well, do a couple more two thirteens, and then he brought it in. So the the his ability to be able to just hit whatever I asked him to do is is absolutely amazing. He's quite the professional. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I I brought in data from um, the previous driver. Now that you had mentioned that, so we can we can kind of com compare the two. Okay, I'm zooming into the chart a teeny tiny and oops i gotta switch back to that view yep. i have so many dashboards set up okay now we have um the traction circle is set up for 1.25 g so you could it kind of zooms fills fills it up completely so here's the previous driver just before that driver change i think with the eight minute time Right. So well. So this one, that's under double yellow. That's. I think that's why we brought him in. Okay, so that's not fair. We, we, so we can actually. So we can actually take a look at it and, and kind of see what's going on here, right? So um, you can see that obviously this is more triangular shape. Actually, it's even more. And the, and on one side it's triangular shape. On the other side it's kind of T shaped. You have a little bit of stuff out there, but the majority of the of the dots make it look like a T, right? Um, so yeah. again, that's very indicative of a uh you know novice to intermediate uh level driver and again they're basically you know i would say this probably was the very first yellow lap so um they weren't behind they certainly weren't behind the pace car at this point right because they're still able to, to to do but they're not you know th this is like a cool down lap essentially right yeah um you know so so they're not pushing it and so you can see that you know this cool down lap for this particular person under double yellow is actually better than you than some of the novices that we seen we saw data that we saw. I actually right? just so uh, switched it to a an earlier lap before before they came in. So this is like a two sixteen twenty, which is so we're three seconds off. From, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So here's here's what it looks like. So it's a little more D shaped, but there's a lot of dots in the middle too. In the middle. That's exactly it, right? So it's a lot more D shaped, but we're still seeing. Uh, those dots in the middle, which means they're basically, um, you know, not quick enough to transition um, to to full full um, traction right away, right? Yeah, that's cool. Um, and, and again, though, we're also seeing their max is what one point three versus one point five, right? So not only are they, um, you know, not always transitioning to to full, um, uh, you know full brakes or full full traction ability uh, um, quickly, they're actually not using all of the available grip um, that Mike was able to uh, yeah. get out of the car. So Mike Skeen's data is in purple here. So you can see how much of it is, is almost yeah. all of it is on the outside. Right. And the, and all the yellows on the, on the inside. Right. So, yeah. uh, you know, again, that, so just looking at the yellow driver because it's it's d-shaped right you would know that they're actually a pretty uh advanced level driver however the little dots on the inside let you know that they're not obviously uh pro level uh like mine like like uh, mike is sorry like mike is um yeah. in there where it, it's almost a hollow d inside there yeah. and again uh the, the traction circle is higher again same car minutes apart yeah yeah Hey, I wouldn't mind. I would, for me myself, I wouldn't mind the yellow yellow graph. Now I have to go. <laughs> right, right. No, he listen. <laughs> he, he, um, you know, all of the drivers that were in that car that weekend were very good. Uh, again, we won this race by um, I think a couple, you know, two three laps. Um, you know, a nine hour race. 
So uh, yeah, no, there, there's everyone was was uh, pretty good. I mean, would you say this was he was? Who was this? A, I think this guy did 15 versus a uh, Mike's 13 and a half. So two two seconds off uh, was, Mike's two -ish, time is not, two -ish that, not too shabby. I mean. I, yeah, it was I'm still. Sure yeah, here. I mean, it's it's in it's in range, right? But it just shows you what what it takes to get to that next level. But, right, um, right. Yeah, I mean, everybody's yeah. on a on a progression too. Um, in fact, these people that were on this team actually did go, eventually go pro. That was the, the kind of the point of the team was to kind of help these guys um, get into the pros, and, and two of them have and are doing very well, actually. Yeah, that's fantastic. So um, we can open it up for more questions, and then while you're thinking about a question. I, we're all we're not far from a thousand likes on our channel, and I think something magical happens to us if we get a thousand likes on on the Autosport Labs channel. So if you can like, gotta hate it. I watch so many YouTubes, but whatever, like, like and subscribe. Um, like, <laughs> if you could like our channel, that would be awesome. And um, yeah, send us any questions before we uh, conclude our live stream. So there actually is something I, I forgot what it is, but there, after you go over a thousand, you, you there is a, a big difference actually. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So if anyone wants to ask questions, please post them in the chat. We'll respond to them. Um, yeah. You know, really, again, we're showing you're using that data to kind of see where you're at and how you can how you can improve and really how you can improve is is by trying to you know um do some reading figure out um you know talk to other people who, who do it figure out how you can use the maximum available traction to you at all times right um so and, and again that's that you know big d-shaped where where uh it is a circle and not a triangle um on the outer limits of that yeah and so it's Again, uh, threshold breaking, um, you know, uh, transitioning, you know, allowing, you know, allowing, allowing the car to moving. Basically, it's all about weight management. You're moving the weight where you want it, right? And you're doing it on purpose, right? So I'm sure that you guys have been, you know, sometimes where you um, need to actually brush the brakes just to transfer the weight. You're not really trying to slow the car down much. But what you need to do is actually transfer the weight to the front tires and off of the rear so you can actually make that turn. If you were to just lift and turn, you'd actually probably push off of the track. But by doing, you know, brushing those brakes just to transfer that weight, you're able to, to make that turn, right? And so, again, it's all about, you know, how to, how to get the most out of the tires uh, is, is by allowing the car to work as efficiently as possible. And, and how you do that is by putting the weight where you want it. Yeah. You're doing things on purpose. You're, you're purposely, you know, putting putting the weight on those front tires. You're purposely allowing it to, to transition over to the to the side, uh, you know, at a certain speed based on what your suspension is capable of, of taking up at that time. That's awesome. I, I can I'm like like before before the uh, before the live stream I was just kinda I had closed my eyes and I just like visualized what it was like to to do that trail breaking, that transition, that overlap of of you know breaking and turning and when you feel it, it's like when yeah. I when I first experienced that for myself, it was like holy crap, that was amazing because you know what it's you know what it's like when you feel it. Yeah, I mean, I learned to do it in my um, eighty four nine eleven, um, so it really reacts well to that. <laughs> wow. um, and yeah. you know, it basically you go in and you you brake and get the car to rotate under braking, um, and literally the the rear end starts sliding uh, out um, and basically i would you know as soon, soon as it kind of gets to where I'm, i want it to be to stop that rear end sliding i then transition back to to uh throttle and, and accelerate uh out right so back exactly so yeah you know, it's loaded up on the front uh the rear end sliding it's uh the weight's off of the rear tires and when i want wanted to get grip again i i start to add throttle it it basically sorry uh it starts to add throttle I basically it basically transfers the weight back to the rear the rear down grips because again rear end engine car right grips and then i'm accelerating uh out of there but literally it feels like the rear end just wants to continue rotating uh, around me but it's a controlled um rotation and yeah. again for this particular car um you know for me to, to stop that i get i just get back on the throttle and do it. I, I drive that way in my e30 as well because it's got those um uh 
the, the, the trailing arms, like the, the, um, the older style, a lot really allows me to do that. I can't do that so much uh, in my E36 as, as I would like, um, but, uh, you know, um, those two cars uh, uh, certainly allow me uh, to, to do that very, very well. That's so cool. Yeah. All right. Well, um, looks like we had some great questions um, and comments. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, this was a success. We're going to think of another uh, useful topic for you, whether it's um, setting up the sy race capture system or doing another topic on driver analysis. When we did our poll in the Auto Sport Labs community, that, was, that like stood out quite a bit. So we may come up with another... Uh, driver analysis topic um, for an upcoming um, live stream soon. Oh, Dave has a last question. Okay, <laughs> we can wait for you. Go ahead, Dave. I am assuming Dave is typing. Sure. Is it possible in the Podium app to add two graphs? Yes, you could. Well, with the drag and drop editor, you can... Um, you could design whatever thing you want. So yeah, we can, um, can you overlay a throttle position and the traction circle? Uh, yeah, you could, um, you could, you could, um, you certainly can use a heat channel in the traction circle. So let's see if we can do that. Um, did you have thr throttle position back then? No, there's no data for throttle position, but, that was that was back in 2015. So yeah, I, I didn't add it until uh, OBD2. I got, it, it would be OBD2 data, so it would be super. Yeah, um, but yeah, you can you can add in uh, you can add in a heat channel so you could see what the throttle looks like at that point. You can also add a, a line chart or just a gauge, and then when you cursor back and forth over over the data you will be able to correlate, you know, what your throttle position was at that, at that point. Let's see if I'm going to take a guess. Oh, here's some data. Okay. Yeah. So we can, um, so here's throttle position and then, um, yeah, then, then we have a, the heat chart. will color that what the throttle is doing at that point. Yeah, you can even have two traction circles side by side, one with a heat channel of brake, and if you have a brake to pressure sensor, and another one with throttle position, just to see what it's doing. Good question. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. Real quick, if anyone has any other questions that they think of uh, after the fact that they want to post it in the you know the Auto Sports uh, Facebook uh, page, or they can um, PM me, um, you know whatever. Feel please uh, feel free. I'll you know do my best to, to uh, answer it and spend, the, spend as much time as you, as you want. Fantastic. Yeah, definitely ask away. This was a lot of fun. Thanks, Scott. And if, yeah. if you want to get um, coaching by Scott, go to performance coaching, performance. Com, com. Yeah. Yep. And uh, check it out and he'll be happy to help you. Sure. Yeah. All right. See you all later.